welcome to election 2015. My name is Mark Lindy and I'm bringing you candidates for all city offices here in the City of Champions. November 3rd, 2015 is the election and the race we're focusing on today is the Ward 3 School Committee race. I have both candidates here in studio. Um, we have uh, Mark D'Agostino and Blessing Rogers who are both running for an open seat uh, being vacated by Alicia Clark who served one term. I'm going to start with uh, Mark D'Agostino with an opening statement um, for one minute and I will hit my little counter here and I will tell you exactly when to go Mark and stopwatch and you're up. Great. Thank you Mark. I want to thank the staff at BCA for having us here today and hosting this debate. I also want to thank my family for their support during this campaign. Um, Brockton Public Schools is an excellent school system and it is full of great opportunities for our students. Um, I want to work to make sure that those opportunities remain for future students like my son Evan. Um, being on the school committee is more than just going to meetings. It, um, in my opinion, should involve advocating for um, our kids, advocating for our schools. Um, I've been doing that um, as a member of the Huntington School Improvement Council, um, and uh, going to the State House to talk to our legislatures about Common Core and Park, um, as well as attending for the forum at Bridgewater State to hear from parents and educators um, about this new assessment. Um, so uh, I look forward to the opportunity to continue to be your advocate uh, here in Brockton for Ward 3. Thank you. Okay, and uh, next up is Blessing Rogers, and Blessing, you have a minute, five seconds. My name is Blessing Rogers. Um, I am an, an alumni of University of Massachusetts here in Boston. I majored in English and mass communication. I furthered my studies at University of Massachusetts Dartmouth with a JD degree in law. I further went to American International University, Washington College of Law in Washington with a specialty in law, in international human rights and international business. I am presently the president of Hope for Children International here in Brockton. We service youths and we mentor youths that are at risk. Presently, actually, Hope for Children is in the process of building a school um, in one of our foreign locations. So working with youth and working with children has not been, I have not been a stranger because I was in the classroom in Boston Public School for eight years. So I'm looking forward to advocating for the children of Brockton. Okay, I'm going to go back and forth. We'll change it up, um, the order each time, just to make sure it's all fair. Mm -hmm. sure. um, my, first, uh, my first question is, um, your race, your school committee race, has not gotten as much attention in the local media. School committee is very important. It's for parents and children. Um, I want you to tell us what unique qualifications you have to bring to the table to be on the uh, Brockton School Committee. We'll go with Blessing first. Like I stated earlier, I am the president of Hope for Children, founder and president of Hope for Children International here in Brockton. I have been doing this work since 2007. Um, I volunteered so many hours working with youths of Brockton that are at risk, mentoring them. Not only that, I also teach English um, as a second language to the parents of some of these students. So I have been in the, uh, in the system, apart from also uh, being in the classroom in, in Boston Public School. So I'm very familiar with um, what goes on in the school and what goes on in the classrooms and also working with children. So th this is something that I do on a daily basis. At the end of the day, uh, after the race, I'll still be working with children in the community. So I will be here regardless. Okay, same question to Mark. Uh, unique qualifications you have to bring to the table as a, a potential member of the Brockton School Committee. Sure. Um, I've been actively involved in the education issues um, that we're facing uh, for a few years now, um, working with the um, group again that, that tried to uh, and was successful in keeping a charter school out of, out of Brockton. Um, 
also being involved in Common Core and Park and looking at those issues and and uh, um, working to advocate uh, for Brockton and for our kids and what I think is right for us. Um, and um, so because I've had involvement in these issues already, um, also I've been engaged in community service for some time, um, working at the, uh, the Y as a member of the board at the Central Branch. I actually chaired and launched a group called Togetherhood. That group was about community service and we brought two service projects to the Huntington School. Um, I've also been engaged with parents um, and educators um, as well, hearing from them and listening to them um, by being active in the PTOs and, and uh, just having communication and dialogue, going to school committee meetings and so forth. Um, so because um, I've already been involved and already been listening um, to um, parents and to educators, um, I think that I bring that to the table that I've, that I've been active and actively involved and I've built relationships. Okay, um, just to further get into to background, um, I, I know what you both said in your opening statements and I'm a little bit familiar with both of the candidates even though I live in Ward 1, okay, I did my homework too. And I know Blessing has both a legal background and a nonprofit background and I know Mark has an insurance background. So I would like to know, to go forward on the question that I just asked, how would those backgrounds that you have aid being a member of the Brockton School Committee? Again, different backgrounds, everybody has different skills to bring to the table, so I'll mm -hmm. start with Mark on that one first. Sure. Um, as a business owner, um, I have to manage employees and manage, create and manage a budget and make sure we stay within that budget and be able to, um, you know, edit that as we go through the year and as things come up um, and, and be able to think on my feet. Um, mm. And I think that that will be, all of those are skills that I can bring to the school committee. Um, also um, negotiating with insurers and, and, and getting in between insurers and clients sometimes to help them solve differences that they might have um, as well. Um, so um, also um, I was hired as an instructor with the um, Massachusetts Association of Insurance Agents and actually teach a class to help folks who want to get their insurance license prepare for the state exam. Um, and I think all of those experiences um, give me, uh, you know, will be beneficial on the school committee and help give me the, the managerial type skills that a school committee member is going to need. Um, okay, thank you. Blessing? Um, as as somebody that has a legal background, I'm very familiar with advocacy. And this is something that I have done both um, on national level and international level. So I am going to bring to the school committee advo advocacy skill, which is what I think the school committee really need at this point. Because there are so many issues that need to be taken to the next level, perhaps the state and federal. And that I have the skill, I have the background for it. As an administrator for a nonprofit organization, um, I work with budget, working with kids, I do conflict and resolution with them all the time. And I know how to work with these kids. I know how to be a good listener. And due to my advocacy skills, and human rights background, I believe that I am going to be an excellent contribution to what the uh, uh, Brockton School needs right now and the community also needs because we, Brockton community needs a diverse uh, um, school committee and therefore I, not only at my background fits in in every aspect of that. Okay, let's talk a, a little bit about diversity. Blessing brought it up. It was one of my questions coming up anyway. Mm -hmm. um, there have been recent, um, I don't know if I want to use the word allegations, uh, but there's been discussion about people not being treated fairly in the Brockton Public Schools. Um, from what I can gather, the school committee have all adamantly denied, the members of the current school committee have denied that there's any kind of discriminatory practices or problems. Do you feel that that's the case or isn't the case? What have you done for research into that topic? Start with Mark. 
Sure. Um, I've reached out to all the members of the current school committee as well as teachers in our schools um, to uh, talk to them about this issue and um, as you said, Mark, the school committee members I've talked to um, deny that there is any uh, discrimination <laughs> happening. Um, I think what we need to do is make sure that the school, the folks that are feel they're being discriminated against as a school committee member, I want to sit down with them and talk to them, find out specific examples um, so that I can learn more about what they're feeling and then um, sit down with administrators and teachers and do something about it and, and so that they can know what it is that's happening that causes people to feel this way because nobody should have to feel like when they go to school they're going to be treated differently um, just based on who they are and where they're from. Uh, that's not acceptable and um, you know, I will look into that further when I'm on the school committee to make sure it's not happening. Okay, blessing, same question about anything to do with what you've heard in recent months, almost a year, about any kind of uh, practices in the school system that some parents do not feel that they're being treated fairly. Well, first of all, I believe that um, education is a fundamental right. And our children are our greatest natural resource that we have. And if we are to send them to school, to an environment where we put them into the care of people that are supposed to be protecting them, and they are not doing so, then we have the issues to look at. I have, as you said, I have heard people, I've talked to children, I've talked to youths who said, yes, that is in existence. And that is why, um, I believe sometime last year, there was a walkout at Brooklyn Public High that they are being treated differently and unfairly in terms of punishment. And my question to them is, you, you cannot get punished if you did not do anything. However, if that is happening in, a, in an institution where we give people the trust of our children, then it needs to be looked into. And not only by speculation, I think that further investigation needs to take place. These children need to be pulled, pulled aside one by one and investigate to find out the truth behind it. Because again, the, where you are expecting the truth to come from, it will not come from there. Uh, the students who, make, who are making the claim are the ones that we need to call one by one and ask them, is this happening to you? Find out which students this has happened to. Therefore. I think that further investigation needs to go on to find out what's going on. Okay, um, this is an important topic and like I said, it, it's been talked about um, open session, I doubt executive session because executive session law is very specific. Um, more to comment on, I, I, I let Blessing go a little longer than you, Mark. Do you have anything more to say on this issue? And I mean, I, I don't want to make it the focal point, but, right. it, it, no, it's, but again, it's been reported in the media. Of course. And uh, again, I, I, I think we need to look into it further and, 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 as I said, sit down with those students and their parents because the parents need to be a part of the conversation, I believe, and um, find out what these specific, of exam specific examples are where they feel they're being discriminated against and make sure that that's not happening. And if it is, we need to do something about it. Um, because it's, it's not acceptable and, and that's not what should be happening in our schools. Blessing, I, I got a feeling you had a little bit more to say on that, so I'll give you another 30 seconds if you want it. Not necessary. However, um, it, I guess because I have talked to some students that attend to that school uh, where this incident has happened and uh, I get a different perspective, and I've talked to parents also, I get a different perspective from them, who, parents who are angry saying that such a thing is happening within our school system. Again, uh, my own position is that we need to look further. We need to investigate. If this is actually taking place, it needs to be investigated. It's not, it should not be one of those things one more time that is pushed underneath No, Because if we don't address it now, then the children will suffer. We need to investigate it. Okay, I'm going to move on um, and talk about budgets, okay? Uh, resources in the city budget have been scarce. Most of the school budget comes from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and there's federal funding. Um, every year, uh, 
the teacher's contract says that teachers have to uh, be notified by the 15th of May to be laid off okay, by their union contract. There were a lot of layoffs this year. Uh, some of them were brought back in previous years. Um, a lot of them were brought back, if not all of them. It seems to have gotten worse. What would be your um, budgetary priorities and how would you tackle the school budget? I heard Blessing talk about her budget as a nonprofit and Mark talk about his budget as a, as a for-profit in, right. in, in an insurance agency. I'll start with Blessing on that question first. Budget priorities and your skills bring into the table on, on a budget specifically. Um, of course, um, with budget priorities, I, I think teachers are important, very important, because if you, if you have a classroom full of students with no teacher, then there's no reason for them to be there. Therefore, we, must, we have to find a way to allocate more money to make sure that we have enough teachers to teach the students. And not only teachers, we have to bring in para professionals to help these teachers in the classroom. Because at, at present, the number of children that we have in the classroom and having one teacher is just not enough. However, um, in bringing also... Um, say, um, educational, uh, putting our resources to students that are um, learning English, students that have disability, I think those areas are the areas that we need to focus so that we can bridge the gap that we have already present. You know, so I think those are the areas that I will kind of like focus on. Thank you. Uh, Mark, same question about budget, your experience with mm -hmm. budgets, budget priorities, and how you would handle it as one of a seven member, or one of an eight member school committee. Sure. Um, we need to make the classroom our budget priority. That's what we're there for. Um, that is the, the top thing that the schools are there to do, is to educate our kids. And so that classroom has to be the top funding priority. Um, we need to make sure that we've got enough teachers so that we can have manageable class sizes. We are fortunate in Brockton to have amazing teachers, but if we cram too many kids into those classrooms, um, they're not going to be as effective as, as I know they want to be and can be. Um, there's only so many kids that one teacher can handle. Um, one way is to bring back more Paris. I think we need to bring back those teaching positions and find other things to look at. Um, this also ties into two other issues too and talking about I know that, that they're looking at the chapter 70 formula I know that the school committee is currently or the city is currently contemplating a lawsuit against the state because of that and I think we need to pursue that um, because we're not uh, there are not there are factors that should be in that chapter 70 funding formula that are not there that affect Brockton and our ability to properly um, staff and educate uh, the kids that we have in this city. Um, also implementation of PARC, again a big expense for the city um, that was an unfunded mandate that we just had to find money for. Okay, I'm going to go to the Chapter 70 funding. There is, um, it all started in Brockton. The Education Reform Act of 1993 started out, um, I think it was Webby versus Board of Education, went to McDuffie, turned into Hancock. The city is contemplating a lawsuit, okay? Again, two different candidates with two different backgrounds, legal background, uh, insurance and financial background. Um, how important do you think it is to take a look at that funding formula and, and revise it? There are those of us, I'm a school committee member for the vocational school, that think if you tinker too much with the educational formula, it might end up favoring the towns versus the city. Right now, Brockton does get a lot of resources through the education funding formula. So um, since you brought it up, Mark, I'm sure. going to let you tackle it first. Okay. Um, so the thing that isn't contemplated as part of the Chapter 70 formula is the fact that Brockton, and there are other so-called gateway cities like Brockton um, that um, have a large um, high-need population. And we need to, and then there are other communities that don't have that. And so we need to make sure that we are being given the additional funding necessary to provide them the tools and the attention that they need to be successful. Um, so that's what I'm looking for as, as far as the change in the Chapter 70 formula is, is really to, to look at 
the student makeup of each community and find a way to factor in um, you know, what the true needs of the students in each community is. Um, you know, we have students that come here from all over the world and um, sometimes they come in um, without the same uh, base of education that um, kids who start here have. Um, and so we need to make sure that that's become a part of the formula um, so that we can give them what they need to be successful. Okay, blessing uh, the chapter 70 question on funding, changing the formula, and what do you think about it? Uh, I believe it should be changed. Why do I say that? Reason being that looking at Brockton, quite all right, they receive a lot of, uh, as it is, they do benefit substantially uh, from that uh, regulation. However, from my understanding, Brockton takes in over 400 students every year. When that regulation was put in place, these were the, 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 the things that, are, that came up now in terms of more students did not, was not in place. Things has changed. So I think those um, situations has to be taken into consideration and looked at, that they look at, the, and look at it, revise it so that Brockton is not going to be at a deficient. As it is, we are, because of we are taking in more students than all the other cities are taking in. And these students, as he stated, um, a lot of these students are language deficient. We require a lot of um, resources to bring them up to standard. Same thing with disability students, requires a lot of resources to bring them up to standard with the other students. Therefore. They, we need to look at that and say, what are we doing, and to correct it. Okay. Um, education funding is also under assault. Um, it was brought up earlier in the debate, and it's, a, it's no secret. Um, I believe tomorrow they're going to be holding hearings at the State House dealing with charter schools. Uh, Governor Baker is a fan of charter schools, and he wants to take the cap off the charter. There may be a ballot question. I know um, charter schools take money from public resources and they don't have the same accountability standards. A um, little bias here, but I want to know what the two of you both think about charter school and how much you would fight if, they, if Brockton comes under attack again for a charter school or maybe it's possible you might be in favor of it. So I'll start with Blessing. Well, uh, first of all, I do believe that um, the good thing about America is that you have option to do a lot of things, and education is one of them. I think that a parent has an option to send their child where they want to send their child, if, whether private school, charter school, public school. However, my take on charter school is basically that, regardless of what the parent decides to do, that we should not use the funding for public schools and fund charter school. Because uh, public school, they are already suffering. They, we don't have enough money in public school to educate these children. And the, the, what happens with charter school and public school is that the crops, the, the crops of the students in the public school are taken, now placed in, uh, they all go to charter school. Now, who is left here? The ones that are left in the public school now requires a lot of resources, which also include finances to deal with. Therefore, we... I do not approve it. I think a parent has option, however, not with the public school money. Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to try, I think I have about five minutes left, and I want to give you guys enough time for closing statements at the end. Um, Mark, you need to answer that question. I didn't mean to <laughs> That's cut all you right. off. Um, so the charter school, this is an issue I was very involved with. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to not be for it, uh, but I actually stood up and fought against the last charter school that was proposed for Brockton. I will continue to fight a charter school that endangers the education of this city. Uh, it's not something that I will be standing on the sidelines ever. Um, you will see me actively and loudly fighting against that always. Um, there are a few reasons for that. This is the funding issue. Um, we have a tight budget. We're strapped as it is and you want to take $10 million away and divert it to a charter school. Um, the other issue it ties into the funding. It's public money going to a charter school that doesn't have, it won't have scrutiny by the school committee. Charter schools are not subject to the local school committee. So they're going to get 
tax dollars and have no accountability to elected officials and in my mind that means there's no accountability to those taxpayers that are paying that money. Um, also a lot of these charter schools are very much for-profit businesses. Um, they're, um, there's uh, actually one company out there, um, Entertainment Properties Trust, they were interviewed by the Washington Post and they talked about how charters are an addition to your portfolio. And I just don't believe that my son's education should be a part of someone's portfolio. Okay, um, we're getting close to the end. Believe it or not, a half an hour flies. We, we, we probably could have done an hour, but uh, <laughs> I got a whole bunch of these to get in today. Last question is the standards have changed over the years. There's MCAS, there's PARC, there's Common Core. Clear position from both of you, and we're going to just do a minute, a strict minute, so we're going to do a cut or I'm going to ring a bell. Okay, blessing, your position on uh, uh, standardized testing and where Brockton should fit into that equation. How's that? Well, standardized testing, um, I don't see anything wrong with it because um, if you're a teacher, you have to have a means of measuring uh, what you're teaching the students. Therefore, you still have to do testing at some point to understand what you're doing. Um, MCAS is a good test. However, MCAS was designed to um, know what the students can, what they can do after high school. So as it is right now, MCAS is not preparing students for higher education, which is where PAC comes in. So I think that a system like PAC is a good proposition in that PAC now at least readies the students for higher education and not only that, um, students can actually get into learning more than what they are doing now with the MCAS. Thank you, Mark. Sure. Um, so I think that we do way too much testing. Um, we can measure, we need to measure student achievement so that we can see you know, what our kids are learning and what they're not learning, and that information helps teachers better, uh, better do their job. Um, however, Massachusetts was a leader in the country in education with the MCAS test and the corresponding curriculum. Um, the PARC assessment is not working. Um, there have been all kinds of issues with it. And the corresponding curriculum, Common Core, I don't think it makes anybody college and career ready. If, uh, I would encourage people to go and just put on YouTube and search for Common Core Math and see some of the examples and see what you think. I, I just think it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, so I think we need to uh, have a moratorium, um, which is a bill before the state, but I am not a fa in favor of Park or Common Core at this time. Um, I'm going to do an opening closing. I'm just reversing the order. Mark was first, Blessing was second in the open, so I'm going to have Blessing go first for one minute and Mark then conclude for one minute. Blessing. As I stated earlier, I bring to Boston Public uh, School um, advocacy. I bring to it volunteerism, which I have done for so long. I believe that we need to bridge the gap of the students that we have in our school. And that gap is the gap between the poor students, the, between the students that are learning language, the, between the students that have disability. We need to bridge that gap. We need to also be inclusive. What do I mean by inclusive? Is that we need to include all, all the students in the same class and provide more resources for them to perform. Therefore, if you vote for me, you are getting not just somebody who has education, the educational background. I have um, the background in the classroom with children. I'm presently working with children. And I have the background to negotiate all together and bring to people, both students, parents, and teachers together for a better good. Mark, a minute 15. Go. Great, thank you. Um, again, I want to thank BCA for hosting this debate um, and, uh, you know, coming in on a, on a holiday. Um, so um, I've already been an advocate for Brockton and its schools and students. Um, I've been engaged and involved with our schools and I've advocated on some key issues, standing up against the charter school, going to the state house and talking with our legislatures um, about Common Core and Park. 
um, being a part of the Huntington School Improvement Council for a year and uh, just being involved in the community. I'll continue to be that advocate. It's more than just going to school committee meetings. You need to be willing to step out of those meetings and step out of Brockton sometimes and go and be engaged um, and, and involved in these other big picture issues too because they all affect um, what happens here in Brockton. So um, if I can have your vote on November 3rd, um, I will continue to advocate for the city of Brockton in, and its kids. Thank you both. Um, you're watching Brockton Community Access. Stay tuned for more election coverage and learn and be educated about the candidates, but most of all vote. Thanks for joining us.